reasonable doubt here i'm i'm super pumped thank you everybody who's here on facebook thank you everybody who's uh watching out there two of my favorite friends most amazing first fellow host justin harris hello hey how's it going and with very good very good how's the fam they're good they're good how's the peeps everybody's good Got no, no complaints on my end and with a man who has been known by many names through the year one of them being the juror whisperer. One of them being an author of uh, nine time, nine, 10, 15 years in a row. The, the God book. 15. 15, 15. years in a row. Uh, also known as, did I say Snake Charmer? Not yet. I said so the Snake Charmer. Also known as the past president, jury trial warrior fellow, amigo. Former, former host. Former host for a decade, eight years, I for eight years, eight years, the one, the only, Mr. Todd Dupont. Man, that's too much. I appreciate that. <laughs> that was quite an, quite an <laughs> introduction. No, well, I mean, it's good to have Justin oh. and Todd on the show. Heavyweight, up and comings. That's I you and me. I hope, so. I hope. I hope one day. I think you're there, aren't you? I'm trying to be you. Oh, brother. I'm trying to be Todd. All right, well, look, I'm trying to be Ray Sorsane, so like, <laughs> yeah, everybody's yeah, I mean, trying to be on. somebody, but how yeah. about just be yourself? That's true. It's, it's so hard to do, right? Hey, Christopher Carlson. Christopher, thank you for chiming in. says, do one, the only. Well, that's cool. Hey, well, how about this? Todd has been known, the Todd DuPont, has been known by many names through the year. Why don't you share one of your favorite Todd DuPont moments on Facebook and we share as friends. I think that's a good, I think that's good for everybody out there. I, I like that, let's hear him. Well, okay, y'all be nice. <laughs> what I try to be nice to everybody, I try. Positive, With, positive Todd DuPont story. I guess we'll see what occurs. So, all right, we got a show. This show's not about me. Tonight, right, it, it's true, but it's, it's about your commentary though, we wanna hear some of the things. That's what's up. Drop some knowledge. Well, what's up? What do you think? What's up with the Harris County uh, District Attorney race? Let's dive right in. You want to just jump in? Well, I mean, there's nothing salacious here. Um, clearly, Harris County's blue. Uh, you, we have incumbent Kim Og. Uh, we have Audia Jones. Todd, uh, you know, we have Todd Overstreet and Carvana Cloud. All capable people running for the, I mean, each and every candidate are capable, I guess I need to remember to look at, each are capable in their own right to handle the job. The question, and that's only in the Democratic primary. I think right. y'all have interviewed uh, Lori D'Angelo. Is there an, oh, Lord Oliver, is he also? In He's the, in the mix, bro. We got one more Mary Nan Huffman. Mary Nan Huffman, if you're uh, watching, if you're looking. She watches every week, dude. Uh, Ma Miss Mary Nan Huffman, come on the show next week. Yeah. Come yeah, on the show. Don't call out to me, to her. Well, well the, the, the reality seems without, I'm, I'm not trying to be ugly at anything, but the reality is most likely no R's will be elected, uh, at least in Harris County. So, um, and I'm not disparaging any candidate, I mean, clearly, but it just seems like voting habits of humans in Harris County are gonna support Democratic candidates. You think there's gonna be a runoff in the, in the in Dem election? There's no question of that in my mind. I know, I know. Who do you think? Who do you think, I'm Justin? Not, I'm, not, I'm not making forecasts. I, 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 I wanna ask, so Todd, our longtime viewers will know how long you've been practicing, but to the ones who don't, how long you've been practicing I've been Harris a, County Criminal Court? A criminal defense lawyer for 20 years. 20 years. Okay, so you have experience on par with uh, Lori D'Angelo. Um, it seems like every you tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, because you interviewed some without me here. Every candidate is running on current DA morale being low. Is that the, the like that's the big thing? Like office morale is low. We got to turn that around from Todd Overstreet. Lori D'Angelo, Carvana, Audia, they all, you know, Kim Og says there's no morale problems, but, you know, we talked about this with Lori over her 20 years of five or six different administrations. What do you think? Do you think morale's different now, or is this kind of like just, you know, teenagers are just 
always you know, always making mistakes to the older school. All right, I work in the trial bureau every day, Monday through Friday, uh, in felony courts, and probably on any given day, three or four or six or seven. It, I mean, well, not seven. I get called a lot, and I work a lot in different felony courts. I'll say that uh, there is an issue with morale. Uh, that's a live issue. It's, it exists in the culture of the district attorney's office. Um, is it attributed to Kim Ogg or her staff? Uh, that certainly is suspect and certainly can be questioned. Uh, would another candidate fix that? that? That's a question. Like, I don't think anybody can forecast or dictate that another person would uh, change morale, but it's line prosecutors who I deal with, what are they gonna do, complain to their boss and get fired? Right. Right. They can talk to the ombudsman. <laughs> Does the district attorney do you even have an ombudsman? Here, well, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll be the ombudsman. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean right. <laughs> I'll be the ombudsman. The show's the ombudsman. <laughs> call in. Call in. You can disguise your voice. <laughs> so, okay. Um, the D's, D, uh, the Dems. <clears throat> Kim Og is losing a lot, uh, is not getting the, um, District Attorney Og is not getting the, the endorsements that she usually gets. And they're going to other individuals, other candidates. For example, uh, she didn't, uh, a number of endorsements, right? We all know who they are. Is that enough to kick her out of the office? Well, there's a notion that I'm not saying I have any inside baseball here. I'm a criminal defense lawyer who goes down there and just works. I am certainly uh, not invested in any DA, DA uh, Dem candidate. Uh, there's a notion that Ms. Og potentially might, might weigh, wait to see who becomes necessarily a primary opponent before she brings out big guns. Well, that's fair. Uh, yeah. That's good strategy. Uh, Do you think... Uh, again, that's conjecture and rumor. Well, I don't know if... Kim Ogg is a viable candidate. She's well, our she's elected... She's sitting leader. district attorney. Like, I don't think anyone should put her out of this thing simply because other people are running for this position. I agree. I think it's healthy, personally, that people that we, it's been a long time coming. Harris County deserves to have opportunities to have candidates that are Democratic. I'm a Dem, make no bones about this. You wear a D on your, on your Well, leg. I know, <laughs> maybe that's symbolic. It's for DuPont. It is. Yeah. Did you know Todd's is, has a long history of elected officials in Harris County? I've heard of this, yeah. You're my my grandmother was the county clerk of Harris County for, uh, as a female, Anita Rodevers. Very few people still know this, but uh, she was the county clerk of Harris County as a female for uh, 15 years, 16 wow. years. There, there's, a, there's a legend that says you used to drive around downtown Houston delivering the, 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 the what's it who's to different offices and everybody knew that you were the grandson and to never mess with you. Well, I don't know their That's side the of river, things. That's the river, bro. I'll tell you this, my dad bought me a 1989 Mustang uh, <laughs> when I was 15 and I became his runner. I didn't even have my driver's license, but it was cheaper for me to do the runnings for his law firm than I guess to pay the other dude eight bucks an hour. <laughs> and what? so I would drive around and deliver things and go to places and that's just the way my dad chose to do his things back then. That's incredible. It, so you also used to dance. All right, I mean, where are we going with this? <laughs> wait, 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 I don't know. I want to hear this, though. Like Everybody wants to know, the man. Everybody. Everybody wants to know. Who's everybody? Todd did DuPont, he, did dude? he tell you this is what you were going to be doing? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I barely agreed to come on two hours ago. <laughs> We've been talking law and politics forever. The D's are going to fight. There's going to be a runoff, but everybody wants to know. I used to break dance. I mean, but is y'all going to hold that against me? No, no. This is awesome. <laughs> Used to. When was the last time I broke did a move? 
or broke? I would think that it was at my wedding. Look. Oh, come on. Not for real. Not like last night. No, I'm too old. I'm 48 years old almost. You busted out the cardboard. No, I'm I'm good. <laughs> look, look, Francis. Do Francis we have any cardboard, joined. Mark? Like any big sheets of cardboard? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Look, everybody on this planet knows who Todd DuPont is. Somebody better call or text or say something. Well, look, uh, okay, I, I didn't think this show was about me, quite it, frankly. It, well, cameras are rolling now, so. It's all good. Okay, let's get, all right, well, let's get back on topic. We'll, we'll about, keep talking what, about politics and somebody, until somebody says something cool. How about what Jordan Lewis did Fair. Oh, this yeah. week in um, the first Court of Appeals? Did either one of y'all catch that? I, I was I in was. court. All right. Talk well, to us about the see? tone and tenor, yeah. All right, so here's what happened. Uh, now, I wasn't, I'm not the best one to explain what happened in the trial court, but apparently through the dealings between the district attorney's office and uh, Mr. Lewis, they messed up some discovery and potentially violated the court's order to turn this discovery over. I'm not doing it justice. I wanted Jordan Lewis to come on, Jordan. We text him. It, but in any event, the court, after listening to all this stuff, fined the district attorney's office $500, ordered a fine. Well, the district attorney's office appealed that, and it showed up in the court, first court of appeals. Uh, or arguments were, I think, Tuesday regarding that issue. And it becomes an issue of first impression. The takeaway... What does that mean? The, the there's impression. Meaning, no judge, as far as any of the litigants, the Dis Harris County District Attorney's Office or Mr. Lewis could articulate that any district attorney's office has ever been fined by a court. Wow. In the history of Texas. Wow. And so the, I, the question became, and there was vehicles, like there's a lot of legal questions surrounding this entire $500 fine issue. But I think the takeaway was that um, the Court of Appeals are okay with understanding that a county or a court can levy a contempt statute to a district attorney who violates a discovery order and and hold them or you know in contempt and jail them but they can't find them hmm. and so uh, Jordan's argument was beautiful uh, the justice one of the justices in this argument uh, gave mr. Lewis an accolade because uh, Jordan admittedly said yeah I'm a trial lawyer yeah I've, I, I've never argued an appeal before he goes I wouldn't have known that Wow. Like it was, it was, in fact, I was texting JV this. I know, and I'm sitting there and I'm in Judge Richie's court, like trying to get out, dude. I love you, Judge Richie, but I mean, come on. It was a big deal. I heard the courtroom was packed. It was, and the justices weren't, uh, well, there were, it was packed, but there were also students mm. that were sitting there. I guess they, something for school, they brought. Like you had a bunch of kids in the same colored shirts, like red shirts, but uh, it was, um, of course, I'm a very big fan of Jordan Lewis. You've tried many cases with him. And I respect him wholeheartedly as a lawyer. And he killed it. He freaking killed it. Um, I heard that consistently from everyone. But also the justice believed he killed it. Yeah. The question is, does the legal argument with regards to whether or not a court, district, county court, have an inherent authority to find the district attorney's office. I think that becomes the issue. Clearly, I wish Jordan was here. He's gonna do a much better job about this than I am, but um, that issue came up on mandamus. We don't know if this will make law or not because it's whether or not, I think the issue is whether or not Judge Wright's order to compel the state to pay a $500 fine to Mr. Lewis is a valid order. Yeah. Um, and if it, real quick, if it, 
If it gets appealed from the Court of Appeals? It goes to the CCA. CCA? Okay. And it, it's a mandamus. They can mandamus. Right. It's this. a mandamus. It's, so it's, it's a mandamus. And, it doesn't and, go to the Texas Supreme Court. It's a, it stays it, criminal? It goes criminal. Because it's contempt. Correct. Okay. All right. Just wanted to know that thing. Sorry. And, and I'll tell you, uh, for the eggheads of this, I mean, there are some very swimmingly legal issues here that uh, Jordan dissected the difference between rules and statutes in front of the justices and uh, piqued their curiosity because, I mean, none of us were kind of expecting, like, he, Jordan did his homework. Yeah. Yeah, he did. I and wish I was there, man. What, how was, what was the tenor of the courtroom, man? How did it feel? Well, there were a lot of prosecutors there, a lot of defense attorneys. No. I sat way in the back left. Uh, there was a mix of both. Okay. Um, it seems like the momentum was for Mr. Lewis. However, I am certainly biased here. Well, what, 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 is the, what are they going to say? What, what you think? Do we expect them to rule in Jordan's favor? Do you remember the judges on the panel? I don't by name, and I, I knew none of them. I don't do appeals. So. All right. I don't think yeah. so. What, yeah, what do you think they're going to do? Well, uh, again, the relief becomes the question because I, as arguably if they didn't, I mean, if they mandamus, then the state takes that up. But would they? I think they would. Yeah, they would appeal it. But, but they the thing would. is I mean, that this isn't making law. It's just a forcing Judge Wright's order. I will tell you. But it's still first impression. Yeah. And Judge Wright's order is the strongest order as it, on the planet, on the universe. I'm telling you, man, Ju Judge Wright stuck his neck out in doing these things. The order for contempt or the order for All the discovery it. order? All of it. Well, not the discovery order, the contempt order. Yeah. He stuck his neck out and... He put his neck on the line because to to say, hey, district attorney's office, you can't do this. And I'm going to put some teeth behind it. I think the district attorney argued. All right. Here, here's the reality. Everybody was arguing about something that's never happened before. Right. And so everybody puts their best, best foot forward, which they both did. I don't I don't know the lawyer that argued for the state. I thought he was competent. I heard. I heard that he. Was, I, thought, I heard that he. Was and competent. he didn't use his entire time. That was something that I think I, I heard that he deferred like five, ten minutes, like maybe five minutes. He did wow. not use his entire time. He just stood on the documents. Stood on. Stood well, on. But the they argument. they brief. I mean, this is something that's typically briefed. Arguments what enhance what's already in the record in terms of what you've submitted. Courts of appeals rely heavily, you, we know, like on what's written. Paper. Arguments really are almost like, hey, just have at it. Either way, a great moment. Jordan had at it. That's what I heard. I'm telling I'm, you. I was, my Jordan phone was blown up. Ha, now, but it, what, dude, Jordan's just a master. He's a master at a young age. Well, he's younger than me. But this guy, Jordan, I love you, you know this. But he commanded the courtroom when he dissected the difference between rules and statutes. One of the justices that was jacking with him for real sit back in his chair and goes, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. Nice. Yeah. And that gave deference to the other justices to understand that a dude that's never been before them, that's admittedly arguing a case for the first time, in the Court of Appeals, distinguish a difference that the, the justice knew but forgot about, I think is what he said. And now that gives Jordan like real good street cred, man. Oh, yeah. Court cred. Well, court I mean, cred. you court know, cred. the man got more not guilty than anyone in Harris County last year, too. This, yeah. this dude's I mean, a real that dude. Too. I mean, that so, too. Thankfully, let's have a show about Jordan Lewis. Yeah, about, well. Not me. <laughs> no, I, not I, me. I just saw what you just did. You just turned this whole thing. Look, and, look, you realize, Jordan like, Lewis. The Jordan yeah. Lewis, everybody. Yeah, you need another camera over here. Yeah, no, the guy doesn't show. Hey, He's what all, if Jordan's phone works? 
Yeah, he does. No, he does. He does. The man, the man's working. The man's arguing all, doing, getting not guilty and such. <laughs> Let's talk about what else, man. Let's talk about jury trials. Really? You seen them? Anybody gone by and seen the Lucky Word trial? Any of that? No. I haven't. I need to get by there only because I need to drop off some discovery to a uh, DA that's in that court. But Lucky Ward's kind of a big deal in Harris County. Where, uh, where is uh, Lucky Ward being tried? He's in the ceremonial? Seven, no, it's uh, 17th floor. Just impact? No. No, it's just that's on the over. 17th floor. Judge Silver? That's right. I heard Judge Velasquez handled the jury selection. That's correct, and Judge Silverman's presiding, and trial's underway. Wow. That's well, Does anybody know why, it was, why he's been waiting t for trial for 10 years? I don't... Well, because they, kinda... they keep... They well, keep... I don't know. You... Well, I, I don't also know the answer. I would say that uh, he did get kind of lost in the pipeline of things, but Mr. Ward also keeps catching new cases uh -huh. inside the jail as well. The extraneous office... I, I don't know much more than conjecture and speculation, but he, he keeps catching cases. The um, the lead counsel, do you know the lead counsel? We know it is. Alan Isbell, right? Alan Isbell, uh, Jimmy Ortiz, and I believe Mandy Miller is also working on the case. Oh, wow. Great lawyers. Yeah, fantastic. That's an incredible team. Nobody could ever afford that team. I mean, maybe one or two people could, right? If, if, like, if Mr. Ward was attempting to hire these people, then uh, he would need a, probably a million bucks. Yeah. At least a million. I mean, there's all sorts of extraneous uh, things that may come in in a murder trial and may become relevant as testimony comes through. Clearly. Are they trying both murders? I don't know. Oh, man, I don't know, but... All the articles I've read talk about both murders, so I'm presuming that they do. How does... Or they are. How does one handle... Because if I'm not mistaken, they're seeking death. They're trying to kill this guy. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they haven't taken it off the table. The jury's going to decide if there's well, a guilty life without parole or death. <laughs> this case is presumably going to take, what, two months? That's a that's a conservative estimate. It event. took it took several weeks for jury selection, but when you have um, you know seeking death, there's going to be individualized board, board hire for right. each person. I've actually never seen that. Have you seen that? Yeah, I haven't been involved in it, but I've seen it. I've never seen it, and it's they, a little they literally the state and the defense lawyer interview each person. For typically, it might start all right. So. Typically, what would happen is the a venire panel, a jury panel, will give a questionnaire. Will be given a questionnaire. Different from the ones that we get in our other cases, right? Oh yes, it'd be particularized to the facts, the best we can. The state and the defense has to agree upon the questionnaire. So then they, everybody goes through it. Court, DA, defense lawyer. And then, so everybody dissects that, and they kind of have a basis to know what this person's thought process is. And then, after the questionnaire, and I, again, I don't know if this was done on a lucky ward. I do believe that it should have been, but it most likely has been. But I don't know, in fact, if it was done. After that, you literally have the court and just the parties interview people individually. It's my understanding that the that the defense waived opening. At least I'm reading this article. Yeah, they Is that did. true? They did. That's what I read too. Okay. Well, no, I know that's true. They waived the open. Correct. Stop. Well, you understand that that's something I, I deal with daily. I know. Sometimes you just gotta wave the open. Okay, so let's now let's I think have. It's still it. open though. They'll put on a case. Well, all right. Yes. The question becomes. Uh, do they open after the state's case? Because if they don't put on a case... They can't then. Well, but there's no... I mean, I guess you could open and then rest. Um, do you think they're... I don't, we don't know if they're putting on a case, though. But the defense God. did not open in Lucky Ward's case. 
How does, man, how do you shut your practice down for two months like that? Would you do it? I choose not to handle capital cases. Um, I disagree with the death penalty, fundamentally. And I understand the work that needs to go into that. I will tell every human, I work with a lot of DAs daily. When my children are grown, I'm going to get into this work. And I'm going to have maybe 10 clients. You're going to get into capital cases? You better Death believe Death capitals? It. Jeez, why, I'm, I'm going to be right decision, next to you, bro. Why is the decision when your children are grown? Because, so, uh, I mean, I want them grown where I don't have to worry about them. Like, I still go to dinner with them on Wednesday nights. Like, I have them every other weekend. I'm a single dad, like, divorced dude. Like, you're afraid that the capital cases will take away time? I do believe that. Okay, sure. And it, and it does. Yeah. It, if a human, and I know every human on the list of Harris County's capital list, I know them all. And they're good people. Mm -hmm. I know people getting off that list because it's taken chunks out of their life. Uh, to get on that list is hard to do to begin with. Sure. For real. But secondly, it takes a piece out of you that uh, you can't get back, especially if your clients get killed. Right. Uh, all right, look, none of us, none of us condone capital murder. None of us. Nope. However, people commit those crimes and juries convict them of those crimes. And if it goes all the way up, all the courts that we can name, and they still decide they're going to kill this human, which they do, then those lawyers typically go to Huntsville and watch that person die. Yeah. And, uh, or, as, you know, our brother Pat McCann has had, and I've seen him at least twice get calls from the governor saying, no, we're going to execute. Like the stay is, is over and this is it. And Pat hangs up the phone and what we do behind that is between us, but uh, that's it. In a moment, uh, his client will be dead. I don't want that on my back, man. Yeah. That's just tough. I heard on, like, I read something tough. on NACDL years ago that um, when you account for everything else, the highest suicide rate is death penalty defense attorneys of any job, period. Well, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's it, you, you do, you, you get invested with folks and you go to their execution and you watch the life go out of somebody that you invested time in and maybe emotions in and. But none of the lawyers agree that what that person did or accused of doing like we don't sponsor no. like killing a child or no. killing multiple killing like none of no lawyer sponsors I sponsor that. my client having a crack pipe or driving intoxicated i agree with you but, completely we get that reputation but well clearly but for me give me ag robs give me nature of sexual allegation charges you know I want to be in front of a jury and this district attorney's office knows I don't really I don't say I'm not I don't care what I'm saying is I'll try a case that needs to be tried sure mm -hmm. JV you've set with many many trials yeah, I know bro I know we right win there. some we right lose there. some right there but it ain't even about, hey, let's just try it. No. Sometimes cases have to be tried. Yeah. If I can resolve them, I will on the fly and get out and go the next. But we investigate every case. We look at all legal issues. But sometimes things have to be tried, man. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just got to cut and move. Like, What's the most thrilling part for you for a jury trial? Thinking the theme. Yeah? I think so. I think the theme of the case becomes... Now, look, I'm not going to give... I know the state's watching here, but that's all I'm going to say. What's my theme? 
Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what gets you off on jury trials? I just like the whole thing. I, I like just like the, when the moment the jury comes in to the verdict comes back. I just, <sighs> just it's like my drug, man. I agree. It's, I agree, it's man. I agree. Have you sat any this year? Yeah, I'm up for two. <sighs> Me too. I've sat, sat, I've had two panels, busted one. Speaking of busting, uh, I heard in Judge Aguilar's court, 228th, uh, it was the fifth panel. Five. Alvin, is it, is it, it's Alvin Nunnery. That's his name, yeah. Uh, is trying a case. Forgive me if I'm wrong. It's some sort of sexual sex case. Um, multiple allegations, big time extraneous. And it's the fifth panel. I almost thought I wanted to ask him, well, around the third or, you know, fourth, I wonder why they wouldn't order a larger panel, like 120 maybe, 140. I don't know. I, I, I'm sure they've thought about it, but I, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if it's because they don't have the facilities right now because they're still trying to rebuild from Harvey and somebody else is using the ceremonial courtroom. There's that, but I also know that uh, if a judge wants a bigger panel, I, there's a few things. If a judge wants a bigger panel, they'll get a 120 panel. Mm -hmm. Like, that's like that. If the case went to impact court, all right, so the point is we need to know a little bit more. Sure. But like, all right, so but let's say it started in impact court and he's busted two or a couple, three times. At some point, some human needs to say, hey, we probably need a bigger panel. But yes, we can get a 120 panel. It, it's problematic. The issues are still the same. And in reality, on cases like a continuous sexual abuse of a child, you know, once the heads start nodding about yes or no's about ideas, uh, the reality becomes that, you know, you might just not like, but all right, all right, I'm not finishing my sentence, but these are hard panels to sit because the issues are serious, man. Mm -hmm. Child sex cases are some of the worst charges that we have, that we ask humans to come down to sit for and listen to. And stay objective throughout the whole process. And how in the F can you? You uh, can. Seriously, I mean, seriously, man. I don't the know. The law says they have to. I don't know if you could ever, I've kind of thought about it. When I heard fifth panel, I thought to myself, what if what's going on is they're saying, hey, look, this is real life. You're gonna have to deal with some real life issues and we need 12 fair and impartial jurors. I don't know if you can find 12 humans. I think you reality. can. Yeah. No, 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 I do believe you can. Well, I swear that I do believe Well, you you're the master, you know, fair. What I'd say to that, the five panels thing, is that's a big praise is due to Judge Aguilar, right? Because I've, how many trials, much less significant, I've, I've picked juries on sexual assault and child cases, but how many trials do you have disqualified jurors that the judge rehabilitates just so they don't bust the panel, right? Or they, you know what, okay, the next one, we're gonna bring over 200 people, and by God, you're not gonna bust that one. So Judge Aguilar, if, if a jury panel is not qualified, doesn't produce a qualified 12 jurors, then they should be busted. Well, I think the judge deserves a little you know, accolade for that. I, I agree. And he was, uh, when I was in his court, he was doing a very good voir dire. And I, I presume it's the fifth time that he's done that. I don't know if, like, you're right. I don't know if he came back uh, from impact court to say, hey, let me handle this. Um, I don't know, but I think you're right. You can find 12 good souls. I mean, they found 12 in Lucky Wards. And praise to those lawyers, defense lawyers, and prosecutors. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna really, because we're a defense show, I'm gonna say defense, to, man, I know them personally. Gosh, and I know who they're going up against, I think, Old ter they're going up against one of them on the prosecutor's side is old, old Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> she's, 
She's coming Point over. Barnett. Yeah, I think Barnett's yeah. on the other side, dude. She don't play. Jesus Christ, she doesn't play, man. And when you're going up against those heavyweights, God, for two months? I mean, I remember when I was just watching a little puppy lawyer in your arson case that you won. No, hold on. Well, it was the, a murder case that we got a hung jury. It was a pardon. It was a murder case. We got underlying hung, arson. Underlying arson. But to, and that was a decade ago. Already? Dang. That was that was a decade ago, How man. How old are you, JV? I'm 36. I know. I'm just. Making... I've been. I've been. I've been following this guy for a minute. It's my uh, Todd, trial warrior, man. And so speaking of going up against. Oh, I think Colleen Barnett is on she's the She's one side. of the best lawyers I've ever tried a case. Jesus, she's good. I'll look her in the eye. She, she's likely not watching this show because she doesn't care about these things. But she's in a capital murder trial right now, too. Well, but she'll, all right, but she knows how to find it. And she is. Colleen Barnett is one of the best prosecutors I've ever tried a case against. And if a human that's a defense lawyer finds himself or herself against her, just do your best because she will bring the shit. Who, who else? She will come at you. She comes and doesn't stop. Well, Jesus, she doesn't stop. Same no, thing. No, but you know what? Quite frankly, all right, other than settling cases, isn't that like, I mean, that's what we're about. This is what the adversarial system's about. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Now, I have lost cases. A jury trial to an intern for the DA's office. <laughs> and I was so aggravated. Nah, I swear, I was like, yeah, wait, no. what? Wait, you are having a bar card and you beat me? Like, <laughs> and, you know, Miss Barnett, it was a hung jury, five, seven, seven for guilty. She still claims she beat me. I was like, nah, nah, no, nah, she did. Nah. <laughs> she did. Nah, bro. No, she did. I'm like, well, hold on. Look, it's five to seven, Dude. man. Dude. <laughs> like, nah. There was no arson. There is no murder. Well, that was my argument to the Houston Chronicle. Well, and it came out, dude. Were you beard at the time? Yeah, I was beard. Oh, God. The hat was good. Well, anyway. But the, epi the epilogue is just as fun, though. So we're, oh, what happened? we're jury selection, right? And I'm 10 years, so I'm a, a 10 and a half year lawyer. I'm, this is 10 years ago. And Todd's like, hey, go listen at the door. And I'm like, yeah, Todd, whatever you say. Go. I don't like listening at the door. <laughs> Makes me freaked out. There's nothing listen, wrong with it. We don't listen at the door. No, you can't. There's nothing wrong with it. Prosecutors do it. Defense attorneys do it. So, But I am two months out, six months out or something, and I go on this. And old dude who I think is in prison now, is he still in federal prison? Blevins? What's his name? Oh, uh, the, yeah. What's his name? The dude who's the... The, the, the defendant? The, no, the no. investigator who uh, for the DA's office who ended up stealing oh, the Superman comic. yeah, yeah. And then trying to sell it and use his own ID. Yeah, and got caught, and he's in federal prison now, or was. He narked on me because he was involved in this case, yeah. He was like, he went and told Judge Hazel Jones, Judge Jones. And she, and she, Judge Jones brought me in in the chambers, and I'm so scared, I'm so scared. And Todd looks at me and says, don't worry about it. I got you. I was like, fine. And I go in there, and I do like a, a half me a culpa, okay? I'm like, I, I was walking by and I'd listened to it. I didn't really listen to it, but I heard it. And uh, she, Judge Jones admonished me and did her thing and told me never to do that again. And I understood her and, and then never I Never done it again. No, well, then she didn't get elected, and then I kept doing it, and then she's now elected again, and I don't do it at all. <laughs> that's what happened. But uh, that's the epilogue of that one. And then uh, Colleen ended up coming in chambers as well because there was some sort of, see, Judge, you got DuPont and his guy listening at the door, and there's no reason for it. But it is what it is. She was upset that day. She was upset. She got mad at me. 
We got caught. Like this. She didn't win. Well, she didn't win. No, no, no. What she told me, Mr. Harris, Justin, was that I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this absolutely what not. She told me, and Colleen knows this to be true because I was there and she was there. <laughs> I got seven, you got five. And I'm like, bruh. <laughs> nah, 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 no, like, no. Okay, we I mean we could do it that way, but like, how about this? <coughs> how about it's a hung look, you didn't prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt to a unanimous jury. That's a loss. The reality of this case is sadly that two children died in this fire. Um, and, you know, they're not an, uh, a footnote in my mind of this case because, I mean, we miss, I miss them and I didn't know them. Yeah. Like, yes, all the lawyer theatrics aside, two children died and yes, there might or may not be convictions, but come on, at some point we have to be human about this thing, man. You're right. And I remember, right. I mean, up until re even recently, maybe a month ago, the pastor, father of those. I'm going to say this, and I haven't ever really said this publicly. All right. My client was accused of starting a fire, and her husband, uh, starting a fire in her home where an overnight guest and her own daughter were residing. The overnight guest was a son of their pastor. And uh, the fire was started. Apparently my client attempted to go downstairs in a two-story home, go downstairs to put it out, but it got elevated. And uh, the husband got out downstairs. My client, who was a heavy set woman, uh, attempted to open the window uh, from the upstairs room where the children were sleeping. And um, she got out. The other two children didn't and both died of smoke inhalation mm. in the home. Like literally right by the freaking window. Mm. Well, the overnight guest was a human named Raymond Farley Jr. Uh, who was the son of their pastor, Pastor Raymond Farley Jr. At trial, after everybody rested and closed, this was one of the, the most unique examples of humanity and kindness I've ever experienced as a lawyer, but we were in the vestibule of the court after the jury's deliberating and I saw Mr. Uh, Pastor Raymond Farley Sr. and his other son and I walked in and I said to them, sir and son, I'm so very sorry for your loss. Uh, ha I have no words, I have children. I would like to tell you that I'm not antagonistic to your what's happening with you and I have a job to do by representing my client but can we get a hug which we did and we said a prayer in the vestibule since then uh, and pastor it was a hung jury um, and since then some of the state's witnesses sucked they freaking sucked and they've been charged with crimes the state had to dismiss the murder case against my client. They did for other reasons. That could be a whole other episode, but it's irrelevant at this point. Since then, I have somehow became friends with uh, pa Pastor Raymond Farley, and um, he's invited me to his church. Now, have, I've, been, uh, I've never gone. I'm timid to go. But he invites me every time I see him. is about once a year. And oddly, I'm the dude that represented the lady accused of killing his son. And he and I are friends. Oh. And uh, I'll tell you that it's stories like this 
that make this job interesting uh, and worthwhile to some degree. Because you, this thing doesn't happen every day. Right. And Pastor Farley, honestly, he knows, and I know I should go. But I'm the dude that represented the lady that it's been unsettled that killed his kid. That's do, heavy. Do you, uh, do you, Justin, as a defense attorney, ever carry any burdens uh, or, or feelings? Of, what I'm trying to say is, look, that's heavy. That is super heavy, man. And how do we deal with it, man? How does, how, I mean, how does, how are, is Mandy Miller, Alan Isbell, Jimmy Ortiz, all the other trial warriors fighting out there? How do we deal with that stuff, man? Because that stuff's heavy and that stuff haunts. Do you not think so? No, I agree. I compartmentalize, which isn't probably very healthy, and I try to have hobbies. Ah, that's tough, man. I used to drink, but I don't do that anymore. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> There's that. No, I mean, yeah, I'm every, whatever works for, for no, everybody, but, but it's a, we, we don't have easy jobs. And we have a job where our job is to fix everybody else's problems. What, what keeps, or at least mitigate their what problems. What keeps you going finding this thing? You don't got to be a I'm, criminal defense like lawyer. You could be anything fight. you want. You'd be just fine. Why I do you? Like why do you? fighting and arguing. Me too. Know, just me too. anybody that knows me in a court or out of a court. <laughs> I just like to argue. What's uh? What's your favorite? I mean, I already asked this. You said everything. Uh, I think the best part of jury of jury trial is jury selection. I just think get so. To talk too. to people, you get to like, you know, I've seen you in jury selection. You asked, you had a client who was, I think, Middle Eastern or had a Middle Eastern name. I don't know where he's from, but he had a Middle Eastern name, and you just asked straight up, like, anybody in here got a problem with people? I don't know if he was Muslim or people from Middle Eastern descent or people who are. Arabic or people who are Muslim and I was shocked at like the two or three people who raised their hand and were like yeah I just think that they're I don't know the what really ugly thing they said but uh, well, yeah. you know I mean, you get to talk to real people and you expect them to be real can you give the number I think Troy might call in yeah let's get the number 713-807-1794 and Andrew Wright saying the camera adds 20 pounds to me. Well, that hey, ain't cool, hey, bro. Hey, yeah, why don't you call in, Judge Wright? There's two cameras. Why don't you call man. in and say something? So. Todd's over here giving uh, the story of his life. It's true. I was I walked into the foyer, the vestibule, when Todd was in was praying with the with the with the with the group, and I walk in and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, because I'd been been a part of the whole trial. Uh, Q. Tate Williams was involved too. Better believe. And I'm over here doing the running, and you know Todd's sliding me pieces of paper. Hey, go find this case. Go find that case. You know, and I'm over there like thinking like I'm actually doing something when you I. You were. Well, uh, you know, I'll, I remember one time during that trial, you were say you were asking me, "Hey, how do I admit a uh, lay the foundation for a fingerprint, or or." this particular thing and I'm like I'm searching I got it and I, I rushed it to you and you you nailed it and it was, yeah when in reality you knew the whole time <laughs> and you were just involving me I mean I, I don't appreciate that but I walk into this vestibule and Todd's over here praying with the the victim not I don't want to do that the victim's family in the in the vestibule that's not happened since that that was a very unique. I also think that at some point there is divine intervention on all of our jobs, man. I'm not saying I'm some weird religious person of how you consider religion. What I'm saying is at some point, some of this stuff's related. And um, it's very odd that I am friends with the father of a person I represented that's accused of killing his son. Like, that, that is odd. It seems odd, but, you know, you're a good person. He's a pastor who recognizes that, you know, good people do bad things. Not that you're the, the person who did the bad thing. I think it's 
you know, I think it's a testament to your character and his character. Is, is less so much as a, an odd thing. He it seems odd. It seems odd because we expect like divisiveness and animosity and clearly like sometimes. But I, you know, I think that's. And, and honestly, I'll tell you, all the DAs I work with know me. I never come to the DA sided. I don't. That's not my deal. I don't walk in and say, well, here's the problem with your case. My issue is always, hey, where are we at? What we got? Man, I get a lot of, th look, the, the DAs I work with daily, we both know the issues on the case. There are some that need to go away. There are some that need county time. There's some that this, that, and there's some that have to be tried. Right. I am very thankful at 20 years of doing this, I don't have to argue with my DAs. I say my DAs. The ADAs that I work with, that I know and respect their work product, I go in, I read the same report they do. Like, we ain't got a jack. I watch the same reports they do. They know me, I know them. If we can move it, it's done. It's over. Let's get it done. Dismissed. Over. If not, we both recognize that has to be tried. And it goes on the trial docket. Like, there's no jacking around. Yeah. Like, like, and I'm thankful that I have that relationship. And I'll say this. It makes me no difference who the DA becomes, honestly, in this county. Because I don't deal with the DA. Right. I deal with her line prosecutors. I'm a trial lawyer. That's what I do. I'm in there in these courts daily, and I love being in there. I absolutely love representing people accused of crime, felony crimes. I don't really do many misdemeanors, fairness. But I know what these cases are worth. The chief, the two, you know, takes a young three, but they'll figure it out. No disparaging here. We know what cases are worth. The judge knows what the cases are worth. Like, we can do justice in Harris County with a good system of people that know what's going on quickly. This can happen, and it happens in my practice. We can get PR bonds. Look, Every beautiful thing about this system happens in my practice. I have judges that give PR bonds. I have judges that give county time, time served on misdemeanors, on felonies. I get all this daily. Do you get body cams from HPD in less than six months, though? No way. <laughs> <laughs> and I know. Hey, I was hoping you were the one. <laughs> no. Well, Somebody must, because I don't. And they don't either. And they. Expedite request. We're gonna have a whole show on this one day. Well, and, and it's real, but it's just technology on that one, dude. It's sh it's crappy. Is that okay to say, Mark? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder, man. I wonder. That... I get results that nobody sees. Well, because you're in the trenches, man. You're there. You know. But I'm not trying to promote myself on that. I don't. No. I'm not asking for anybody to call me. I enjoy my practice of indigent defense. Yeah. I enjoy this. What's, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the one thing you love about it the most? Or one of the things you love about it the most? What, the, one of the things I love about indigent, represent, yeah, represent, uh, representing individuals accused of crime. Well, I mean, it's not that profound, but honestly, like, like, for instance, if I have a relationship with the DA and they, they might know that it's I've been assigned and they look at it and say, I'm, this, I'm dumping it. Yeah. Like, they'll dump it. I say dump it. They'll dismiss it because they know I'll litigate it. Now, I'm not forecasting, but that, that's like, but they should probably do that anyway. Sure. I would think that if it's a crappy case, but I'm saying, like, Maybe that's just fortuitous for me that they, they did it for me, but not necessarily like they could have did it for them. But well, it, there's it's, two types of criminal defense lawyers, right? There's plea bargain lawyers and there's trial lawyers. 
And the DAs know what you are after you walk in, especially in district court. And if they go, damn it, there's a trial lawyer on this case and I, I got to dump this. But if it's a plea bargain lawyer, it's like, ah, this is you, great. I'm you know, gonna get, I'm going to get a guilty plea out of this. I, I've debated that because honestly, I have a lot of DA friends. I'm not saying like super friends, but I have, I honestly do believe in the culture in the district attorney's office, they're not worried about us. They're worried about them. If that case is needs to go, they're gonna dump it. I don't. I think even the worst case lawyer shows up. I. I honestly. I'm saying where I practice. I do believe in the felony courts. If it's a shitty, sorry, if it's a bad case, uh, they're gonna get rid of it, regardless of who the the defense lawyer is. I do believe that. I. I. I agree too. At least on the felony side, I think. I don't not. think there's punishment for having a crappy lawyer. Well, I, I will also say that used to occur, though. Yeah, I don't know. Well, well I think on the. Yeah, I, I think you deal with a lot of the chiefs. I do, and I deal with a lot of threes and twos and. Well, I, I think that just they don't know. Yeah. I, I literally looked at after looked, the third setting. At DA, I go to the chief, but I looked at one of them in the eye today, and I said, "How are you going to prove that?" And it, it boggled their mind. It just yeah. boggled their mind. I said, look, because I'm trying to get out of here. And he signed the reset because you didn't know what you're talking about, whatever. And, and I said, how are you going to prove that? And they, they just looked at me like, I have to prove something. Like, yeah. how are you going to prove that? Prove it. Anyways, we're out of time. Already? What? We're out of time. Whoa, we're just sitting down now. with a conversation with Todd DuPont. And I think everybody. No calls. No calls. No. Everybody That's just BS. watch it. Look, look, we're getting, crank caller. look, we're getting hearts, and we're we're getting hearts uh, all over the place, and we're getting thumbs up. Everybody loved it. You should have called. I'll see you later. Uh, we got to wrap up. Uh, Harris County Criminal Law Association, past president, author, lawyer extraordinaire, my friend, mentor, Mr. Todd Dupont. Snake charmer. That was my favorite. Uh, thanks for watching. Host, Justin Harris, producer, director. JV, spelled J-A-V-Y. Just Della. the talent. Just the talent and a pretty face. <laughs> Same to court.